there's something weighing on my heart and my mind that I needed to make sure got said in this week's video. So typically businesses try to stay away from politics and um, the problem is what I'm about to say shouldn't be political. This isn't politics, this is human life, it's humanity. And it's important that we say it. What's up everybody? Say hi to Mikey Mike. Mike's in the house brewing today. Tell him what we're brewing. Double dry hop man. DDH. Got a new hop for this one. Guess what hop that is? That's right, a new batch of DDH. The first batch here had uh, Brew One. That was the hop we used for the double dry hop. So big pineapple flavor. Man, that batch turned out so good. I thought, man, it just too bad we had the virus hit right when we released it. So a lot of you guys didn't get to have it on draft at a lot of places. So many of you have checked in on Untapped and on social media. Um, drinking DDH during the virus while we were doing deliveries and that kind of stuff and it was a huge hit so we can't wait for the second time around as you saw we just brewed it this week and the hop we used is Sabro so I don't know if any of you guys have had Sabro IPAs several breweries have done some Sabro IPAs super coconut flavor and aroma it's kind of it's pretty unique I'm excited I think with Fancy Dance, you already get that tropical fruit and pineapple flavor. And so to pair that with some coconut from the Sabro, it's going to be dynamite. I can't wait. Um, actually, when we first decided to do DDH, Sabro was like the first hop I was really excited about doing. It's just at the time when I first ordered the ingredients, I couldn't get any Sabro. So now we got it. This should be ready here in about three weeks. We'll have a release in the tap room at the Brewers Union, so stay tuned for that. Alright guys, so last, last episode I hinted a little about a beer. We're losing a beer. We're going to say goodbye to a beer. We're going to say goodbye to one of the very first beers that we produced and put into our core lineup, what we call our core lineup or year-round lineup. We're saying goodbye to Oklahoma Gold. Oklahoma Gold's a good beer. Here's what happened. So really, we just kept tweaking Oklahoma Gold and trying to do different things with it. The hop character, the um, different, maybe how, how light it was or the ABV. We kept tweaking it so much and changing it so much that it just, ended up not being the same beer that it was in the beginning. And I was just always trying to, I don't know, I was just trying to get it to a place that I imagined us having a light beer. And we're not gonna do any lagers until we move into the new building. So everything we do is an L. But the, the, the biggest reason that we changed was because one of the uh, tweaks we were gonna have to make with the beer was gonna change the beer so much that it wouldn't even be the same beer. I mean, not even close. So we just decided to rebrand. Then once we decided to rebrand, we decided we might as well just change, um, you know, change it, everything, you know? So the biggest thing is yeast, yeast management in the brew house. We, we basically use two different yeasts either a California L yeast, so that's used in the Mosquito Hawk Amber L, and it's used in our Imperial Stout, or we use um, London L3. London L3 is used in all of our IPAs. We always used a different yeast for Oklahoma Gold, and so now that's three different yeasts, and it, it, it was just, you know, we actually tried it a few times with the London L3, and just the recipe wasn't really meant to be used with the London L3 yeast. So long story short, 
we just we made so many changes to it that it just wasn't even the same beer anymore and then on top of that just the branding and the name doesn't fit the the native name branding that we that we're going after in the beginning i felt like we were just trying to be all things to all people and in reality the best thing for us to do was to go all in be oklahoma city's native american brewery and go all the way with that all of our beers for the most part i think <laughs> will have native american names or stories to them so that's just that's kind of some of the reason for the change so saying goodbye to oklahoma gold but we still wanted to have a light beer so we're going with res dog so if you follow us on social media, you've probably already seen this. Res Dog is a blonde ale, and we basically use a lot of the same ingredients that a traditional Pilsner would use, or, a, or some, like a German lager. So we use Pilsner malt, um, we use Hollitower hops, and we even lagered it in the tank for a few weeks at a lagering temperatures, so real cold temperatures. And the only thing is we did, we actually dry hopped with the hollow tower. So, I mean, we are Skydance Brewing, right? So, I mean, I think down eventually what we'll be known for is our IPAs and we love hops, but we didn't overdo it. It is, it's a little hoppy for maybe a blonde. I don't know, you guys have to try it. Today we had our outdoor event at the Brewers Union and people said it was it was just fine as far as the, the dry hop level, but let's break into it here. Now, we did use the London L3 yeast and the London L3 yeast tends to uh, lend towards somewhat of a hazier beer sometimes. So, I think it's a beautiful beer. Let's get the logo off just so you can see see it good. I think it's a beautiful beer, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not a light beer drinker. I'm normally not a I'm not a light beer drinker normally, and and that's the other thing. I think I really wanted to brew something, and Oklahoma Gold is a good beer, but I wanted to brew a light beer that met my flavors, like what I like. My taste, everybody's taste is different. Some people are gonna be sad about Oklahoma Gold being gone. I know some people that love that beer and it's gonna take some convincing to get them to switch to this beer, rightfully so. I mean, it was a good beer, but I wanted a lighter beer, a lake beer, a sitting out on the back patio like I am right now and drinking out of the can beer. You know what I mean. I wanted a light beer, summer beer like that, that, that met the flavor profile that I particularly like because I know we got you got to brew beer for your customers and what they like but if you don't like the beer that you're brewing and you're not passionate about it and it's not something that you'll drink a ton of that's going to show when you're out trying to sell beer I've really just wanted to brew something that was just more me and more what I like and so this is what we came up with like I said real hazy right now we'll see I mean We'll see what this does after a week or two. It's been in the can now for about a week, but um, we haven't canned it before until till now. It's the first time we've brewed it on this scale, so we'll see how it reacts over time. I can tell you this, like I said, that I, wanna, I wanted to make a light beer that I really enjoyed drinking a lot of, and today at the outdoor event, I think I had, we were out there for two or three hours at the beginning of it and just talking with some people and hanging out, and I think I put down a six pack of this really quick. And anybody that really has drank beer with me and knows me, if they, if they, if I told you that I was gonna have six beers today and none of them were an IPA, you, you would have said I was crazy. So I actually drank like six of these today and I didn't have any fancy dance. I didn't drink any IPA today. So now I think this will be number seven. I'm gonna enjoy it actually here in a little bit with a cigar. I don't know, it's not something you typically think of with a cigar, but I'm gonna put it to the test. That's how much I like it. I really do like this beer a lot. So, finished really low on gravity, which just means, you know, light body, real light body. It's crisp, it's really refreshing. Man, when it was like, it felt like 100 degrees outside today, and they were going down so quick. The dry hop, it's not, I, I would not call this a hoppy beer. I wouldn't say it's hoppy. 
I think it is just what I'm what I was going for. The hot the, the amount of hoppiness that it does has have to it almost lends towards giving it some of that crispness, you know. So it's got a lot of flavor profile to a Pilsner. It, it has a lot of that to it. So anyways, we'll be selling these in six packs. It's 4.9% ABV. This is a year-round beer. Well this is this is our light light offering. This is what we'll offer as our light beer from here on out. If you guys look out for this in the next probably in about a week you'll start seeing seeing it in the shelves at the liquor stores you can come to the brewers union and buy a six pack of it we're really aiming hopefully the stores will all carry it in about that 9.99 a six pack range you guys give it a shot man check it out especially if you guys have been drinking oklahoma gold i can't wait to hear what some of you guys have to say about this beer if you if you buy some of this beer and you were you know formerly of Oklahoma Gold, send me a video. S send me a video, a message or something of you drinking this beer and telling me what you think about it. You never know, maybe it ends up on this vlog right here, right? Cheers, guys. Get out there and check it out. Come come to the Brewers Union and buy some Res Dog, okay? We'll be open at the Brewers Union next weekend. We'll go, get back to our regular hours. We're actually gonna be releasing another new beer at that time and I'll put that out on social media later this week. And you'll have that beer and this beer available at the Brewers Union next week. Come out and get it. Cheers. Before I sleep, hear the crickets, see the moon. Side by side and through and through. No limit to what we can Hey guys, so it's uh, it's Sunday morning, and typically I've got this video already loaded up on YouTube, and <clears throat> I had one, I had it all loaded up and edited, it and, and then I just realized that there's something weighing on my heart and my mind that I needed to make sure got said in this week's video. So typically businesses try to stay away from politics. And um, the problem is what I'm about to say shouldn't be political. This isn't politics, this is human life, it's humanity. It's important that we say it. So we all know what's going on out in the world or what we all see the news and social media. So you all know what I'm getting at. And um, the reason it's important that I say something is that you know we are Oklahoma City's Native American brewery as someone who's half white and half Native American, I've seen and heard a lot of things negative, racially based towards Native Americans that people say because they don't know there's a native in the room because I don't look native. And it happens a lot, happens all the time. I feel bad about two things. One is the times that I didn't say something back to stop it. And then also the times that they felt safe to say it despite not you know they, even if they don't know I'm native why did they feel safe saying it around me right <clears throat> so I think there needs to be a conversation about how we fix it and I'm just telling you guys you know I've thought about what I was gonna say in this video or what I wanted to say period about what's going on I've thought about it for several days you haven't seen me on social media making comments or you know I'm not I wasn't a social justice warrior behind a keyboard and the reason is because I wanted to take time to gather my thoughts about it wrap my head around what's going on and I really think a lot of you should do that more a lot of you guys need to take the time out to actually think about what you're saying before you get on social media and say it so Particularly, I'm talking to a lot of my friends who I know you're not racist. I know you're not. I know you. But you'd be surprised at how insensitive you're coming across on social media. And then vice versa, on the other side, some of you guys who think the way to make change is by posting something about it every 10 minutes on social media and trying to make yourself look less racist or you're overcompensating to show how, how unracist you are. You're not making a difference. What you're doing is you're dividing people. You're 
you're saying things on social media that are implying that some people are racist when they're not. If somebody's against looting and rioting and destruction, that doesn't make them a racist and stop calling them racist for that because all you're doing is dividing. What you need to be doing is having conversations with those people and dialogue with them and help them understand where you're coming from. Those of you who keep saying all lives matter, look, yes, I get it, man. I do. Look, I'm a former cop, all right? When I saw that guy with his knee in the back of somebody's neck as a former cop, it made me sick to hear people destroying cops and saying all cops suck and they're racist and some people holding up signs at these <clears throat> at these uh, protests calling them pigs and stuff a lot of my best friends are still cops and I'm telling you they feel like you do they hated seeing that what's sad about this is how close we were to all actually finally coming together over something because we all agreed that what happened was horrible and wrong and that something has to change. We're all in agreement with it. And then now somehow we're all divided on social media. So my heart's kind of broken over that. My fiance has been sitting around in tears half the time for the past week, week and a half just over what she sees on social media, people fighting and arguing, and it's, it hurts. But those of you who are saying that, well, what about all lives matter? I think you ought to take a piece of what Lincoln Riley said, which was all lives don't matter until black lives matter. And you know what? It's until brown lives matter and, you know, everything has to matter individually or else all lives haven't mattered yet i can remember when when my dad and i would go out for a beer and sit at a bar and just talk and those were the best memories i ever had with my dad and then you know next thing you know another person would come up and we'd be having next thing you know you're having beers with four five six people and that camaraderie, the community, that, that's why I wanted to start a brewery. That's why our logo has two feathers. And the feathers have breaks in them. They're not perfect. You know, that's a symbol, symbolization of us not being perfect. There's different colors within the feathers to show that, you know, there's some of us have multiple sides to us, right? I'm half Native American, half white. But eventually the two feathers come together they come together and in the middle of the beads that are holding it together, that's, that's our community. That's us. And right now it doesn't feel like we have a community <clears throat> because so many people are too divided. So instead of getting on social media and looking for a fight, I think we ought to have conversations and tell people that we love each other more. You know, I drove around with my son the other day. We talked about what's going on. I wanted to make sure that he understood what was going on and I wanted to see where he stood with it and what he was thinking and he made a comment that was so powerful like he said that he thinks that a long time ago meaning like you know and back in our day because we're all old to him which I guess we are but he said a long time ago he doesn't think people cared that people of color were being hurt and discriminated against but now it's things are different and people do care he said that and it made me think about how kids their minds haven't been messed up yet like ours have and we need to be more like them we need to be more like that video of that little kid that I saw from a couple of years ago who it was an african-american lady with her little kid and they were at some outdoor event and as they were leaving the kid decided she needed to go she's like two years old she wanted to go from person to person that was sitting out on this lawn area people she didn't know she went up to each of them and hugged them like 20 30 different people and um pretty powerful you know 
we need to be hugging each other more. We need to care for each other a little bit more and actually have some desire to actually want to be together and, and, and uh, be a community. So anyways, that's all. That's what I wanted to say. Let's just let's try to fix this by talking and having dialogue. Let's not fix it by trying to call everybody out and calling people names, calling somebody racist when they're not, or being insensitive and stop saying the all lives matter bullshit. Sorry. You know, support the people who are having a hard time mattering at all. Okay? Let's try to just get back to being what we're on this planet to actually do which is to love that's why we're here is to love when my dad died at the funeral when I spoke at the funeral I remember saying that at the end of our times we won't be judged by our, all of our accomplishments and things that we have gathered and, and earned but we'll be judged by how much we've loved each other and uh Right now is when we really need to be thinking about that the most. What I would urge you to do is find somebody that you know you disagree with, that you have different views and opinions from, and take them out. Bring them to the Brewers Union for a beer. Take them to Rough Tail, Stone Cloud, Oak Valley. Go to Okinawa or uh, you know, go to Tapworks or you know, go somewhere and sit down and have a beer with them. That's what beer is for. That's what craft beer is for is to bring people together. Like my dad said, good beer brings good people together. So, do that. Actually do it, use that. And love each other more, okay? I love it, everybody that's watching this video. I love the Skydance community. And, uh, cheers. Before I sleep, hear the cricket, see the moon, side by side and through and through, no limit to what we can do.